Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's training on Quizlet. Uh, I have been using Quizlet in my classroom for about a year now after hearing about it from Becky Rediger, and it has become an essential form of learning, review, testing, and uh, interaction between students in my class. It has really helped my class take a quantum leap forward. Uh, in terms of student engagement and in terms of the students ability to prepare for tests and I would like to see that expand as much as possible at Waldo. Uh, Quizlet is particularly good for any kind of vocabulary or content that you are teaching that essentially has uh, definitions and terms. So it could be applicable in math, health, science, social studies, um, any type of discipline where you're having definitions uh, and terms that go with those definitions, Quizlet uh, is for you. I have provided three links here. One is a link to Quizlet where you can create your own Quizlets. One is a link to Quizlet Live. Uh, and I've also created a link to all of the school-wide resources I have created that the entire staff is welcome to use um, using Quizlet. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my Quizlet link right now. And it's going to take me right here. And this is what you will see when you log on. If you are creating your own account, all you have to do is click log in and log in with your Google account um, through Salem Kaiser. Um, that will make it very easy for you. And that's exactly what your students will do as well because you can actually create classes and then students can join up with those classes. And I'll explain that here in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And since my second semester is coming up soon, uh, this right here is showing me all the Quizlets I've created, so or the ones that I've used. And you can see which ones I've used simply based on the creator over here. Everyone has their own account. That'll show up on the right. So um, notice I've got my first semester classes here. So to show you how to create a class of your own, I'm going to go ahead and create one right now. And that class is going to be 8th grade U.S history. And that's going to be period one, semester two. I need to create this anyway. Um, and then what I will do is it's going to create the class. Oh, I need to enter my school name. Okay, that happens to be our school. I create the class. And now all I have to do is copy and paste this link if I want to into Google Classroom for that class uh, and that will serve as an invitation for that class to join so that way you can keep your classes segregated by period and you can track student progress by period. That is why um, having more than one class uh, is helpful. For instance, I will use this when I um, create my class next week. So this is an example of my current uh, period one class. All the students have created their own accounts um, using the same method I just showed you. Um, and it will allow me to track their progress and what they're doing on specific assignments. So if I want to look at their progress, for example, on my causes and events of the Civil War list, I will click on this. And I will go ahead and click on the particular class that they are in. Uh, let's just choose 8th grade history period 4. That one has 26 members. And I can click on individual students, see what they've studied, what day they studied it, and uh, it can also uh, aggregate more data as well. So here's the new class I've created. And there are also folders. So for example, I have a folder for my computer literacy class. Any Quizlets I create for that class go in there. My seventh grade social studies, any Quizlets I've created for that class go in there. I've created a school-wide resources page, which I've linked on the PowerPoint at the beginning of this YouTube lesson. And then my eighth grade, I've been teaching that a long time. That's the biggest. And I also taught sixth grade. I barely skimmed the surface of the water last year with that. But, so, uh, and if you want to create a folder, it's as easy. You create the folder name and you create a folder description and then anything that's applicable um, you put in there. So for example, my eighth graders, I told them today, 
If you have any tests or quizzes you want to retake, you have to do it before the end of the semester. I literally go up here, I copy and paste that link, I put it in Google Classroom, and they automatically have access to this entire folder, which will allow them to study for any test or quiz um, that they would like to uh, over the course of the semester. Just link it on Google Classroom. So right now I'm going to go through the process of showing you how to create a Quizlet. It's fairly straightforward. You come up here to the Create button, and the first thing it's going to ask you to do is create a title. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and create a title of the Quizlet, and since I'm a history teacher, I'm going to go ahead and make it on a topic that I happen to know something about, Constitution and Government. Okay, so that's the title. It's going to ask you to choose your language, so I'm going to make it English and English. And I'm just going to show you a couple of terms here and how this works. So um, I'm going to go legislative is the term, and that is the branch of government that writes the laws. And I click on the picture here and I choose the image that I like the most. I like that image right there. And I have a microphone, and the reason I have a microphone is that I have actually paid for my own Quizlet subscription. So I can actually do voiceovers of these things myself. Otherwise, it gives you a generic voiceover that sounds very similar to Siri, uh, and that's fine. Also, when you choose your own account, you have the ability to upload your own pictures. Whereas if you use the free account, they give you three or four selections. You can only choose from the selections they give you, and so it's a little bit more confining uh, from that perspective. So now I'm going to go ahead and enter one more term, executive, that would help if I could spell, and that is the branch of government that enforces the laws. And it is intelligent. You press on the picture. It's going to bring on a picture of the White House. You click on the White House, and there you have those terms. Then once you click Create, the list exists. It gives you the option to share it. It gives you a folder. So if you wanted to copy and paste that folder name to uh, Google Classroom, you could do that instantaneously. And it works very nicely. And so I've created two flashcards here. I'm going to go ahead and show you these super quick and how it works and you have the option to shuffle how you want them done uh, or not shuffle. You can um, start with the definition, you can start with the term, you can have both on the same slide, and you can have the audio on or off. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this real quick with the audio on. I'm just going to click play and we'll watch what happens. The branch of government that writes the laws. Legislative. The branch of government that writes the laws. So now I'm going to go ahead and press the forward arrow. The branch of government that enforces the laws. Executive. And it's that simple. It is that simple. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that list because frankly I already have it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and get that off. Uh, and you know I'm going to worry about that later because um, this is a YouTube video and I can do that on my own time. So we're going to go back to my Quizlet lists here, and I'm going to go ahead and choose one that is uh, applicable school-wide, so you can kind of see some of the things we're doing. So today we're doing vocabulary list number two in our extension period, so I'm going to go ahead and choose that one. And I have 12 terms there. I added two more because in order to play Quizlet live, which we're, we're going to talk about later, you have to have a minimum of 12. If you don't have a minimum of 12, you cannot initiate a game of Quizlet Live with your class. So these are the different methods students have to use Quizlet. The first one is called Learn. We'll just do this one super quick. Um, to have indicated who or what someone or something is. So in this case, they actually have to type the answer from memory, and they have to know how to spell it correctly. So I'm not going to lie, I don't actually use this one very much, but it will give you progress here, how many you have left, how many you've gotten incorrect, and how many you've gotten correct, uh, and it shows you that progress uh, as you go along, and it also gives you options here. So if I wanted to um, start with the term instead, 
and if I wanted audio, Benefiting. it would do that. See? It just gave me the answer. So there's different ways you can set that up. Uh, if you want to do a spelling test, it's got the spelling test. So it's simple. Type what Availability. Assessed. See? So it tells me if I'm correct or wrong. Establishing. It's kind of good that I'm correct since everybody's watching. So I'm going to go back to that list where I just was. And that was a spelling test. So you can actually create assessments for your students. We're going to talk about that in a minute. This is a game the kids absolutely love. It's called matching. And literally, you just it times you and you're competing against other students in the class. And it actually creates a ranking system, which is kind of fun for the kids. So something that has had meaning precisely explained, and that would be defined. My cursor is not working for some reason. That's awkward. Start over, see something's wrong with the game. Okay. Normally this is like knockout. You would click on the picture, you click on the word. Uh, I have a feeling because this is a YouTube video, it's not working for me right now. There's some thing in the functionality that's not making that happen. But this is a great way for kids to practice, and I'm sorry it's not working on the video. And then the other thing kids like is a game called Gravity, and you basically have to um, we're going to start with the definition here, and I will have to type in the word. I'll go ahead and make it easy, and they have to type the, wo the word of, that goes with the definition. Okay. Nope, I got it wrong. So unless I type it in correctly, the asteroid is going to destroy me. So then I can press escape, and it tells me what the correct answer is. That's kind of fun. So the part that I think um, is very useful in class, sometimes you need to give an immediate formative assessment or sometimes you just need to give a quick assessment. Uh, the one thing I would say is you kind of need to look over a kid's shoulder to make sure they don't have any open tabs up above. But you can actually create tests. So this is going to actually create a test for this vocabulary list. And it gives you options. You can create written, matching, multiple choice, true, false, and you have the option of showing pictures or not showing pictures. So I'm going to go ahead and take off written. I'm going to go with matching, multiple choice, and true, false. And it's going to actually create this test for me. And so um, I can see that benefiting is C. I can see that approachable is A. I can see that establishing is B. And I can see that researching is D. And to have estimated or judged the value of something. And my role is, that picture kind of gives it away. And it would be identified. Having a large enough effect to be noticed is uh, significantly. And true, false, not particular, unspecific. That's true. Able to be present or used. Availability. True. Something that has meaning explicitly and precisely defa defined. Identified. That is true. And the abstract aspect of something or how it works. Conceptual. They're all true. I missed one. Which one did I miss? I'm trying to do this too quickly. And I'm on video, so that's embarrassing. I had a feeling that one was wrong. All right, so it gives you a percentage, and so as a teacher, you could simply say, I'm going to throw that percentage in the books, and that's a test. I didn't have to spend one second of one day creating that test. Uh, there is the issue of whether or not you're standing over their shoulder to maintain the testing conditions, but other than that, it's an instant assessment. So the only other thing I have to show you is Quizlet Live, and the main thing you need to know about that is it does take 12 terms. If you don't have 12, you can't play Quizlet Live. Uh, you would simply go here, click on Live. It will create a new link that looks like this. This guy has a video that tells you all about it. I'm not going to do that right now. And you create the game. And just like Kahoot, students will go to this link, Quizlet.Live. They will enter the code. Um, and from there, I'm going to show you in real time just how this works. Uh, I hope this has been helpful. 
And uh, if you have any questions about how to use Quizlet or Quizlet Live, please feel free to email me or come talk to me. Uh, it's done enormously positive things in my classroom, uh, and I hope it does the same for you. Uh, and with that, um, this is Mr. Blumendahl signing off until my next professional development opportunity. Thank you for listening.